Israel, kind of a quick turnaround, right? Five months, the instant rematch. I'm just curious, kind of what this time has been like for you. You know, has it been like a, a fun challenge or a frustrating time? What's, what's the preparation been like? Oh, um, the last five months. Well, Christmas was the first time I enjoyed Christmas with my family in, fuck, three years probably. All of us together in the same house doing regular folk shit. And New Year's, I actually enjoyed it, got crazy, um, still working, getting stronger, but like, kind of like unsubscribe from all the fight shit, you know, um, but yeah, from then on, I've just been working. I've always been working, uh, never really took my foot off the gas, but I just, you know, let my, let my hair down a little bit. Do you feel like that was necessary? I mean, we hear a lot about, right, like the, the pressure of being a champion mm -hmm. and all that it entails. There's always pressure, bro. There's always pressure. I'm Israel Adesanya. There's always pressure on me. But, um, yeah, I still don't, f I, I mean, I don't feel that, oh, the pressure is off my shoulders or anything. There's more pressure on me now, you know, because I'm me. I'm not him. I am me. So, um, yeah, there's always going to be that. But, again, like I said, since it's my debut, pressure makes diamonds, and I'm going to shine. Nice. What do you take out of the last fight, right? Because it was a great performance from you, except for one moment, and that's what changes the result. So how do you break down a fight like that, you know, knowing that there were good things, but you still didn't get what you wanted? Um, how do I break down a fight like that? I know what works for me. I know um, how I can beat this guy. I know every time I fight this guy, I'm dominating him. I'm beating him. And then he has this special ability to recover and put his foot on the gas. So I have to find a way to take, take him out of the driver's seat, which I will. We think of you as a very mentally strong person, right? But this yes. guy has been following you in your career. I mean, does this guy bother you? Is, is he annoying to you or, no. you know? It's not, it doesn't bother me, it doesn't annoy me. Um, I focus on me, I don't focus on anyone else. Um, you know, when it's time to fight, I focus on who's in front of me. Uh, most times, I'm always peeking around the corner. Even you guys know, I set up my next fight sometimes on the, on the, you know, on the slide. But this time, I have no idea what's next. I haven't even looked around the corner. I've just had my targets, my sights right on this guy. He's dead between the eyes. Last thing for me, you just said it. You don't know what's next. But I think a lot of people are asking you beat him. Do you got to beat him again? Do you want to beat him twice in a row? Mm, actually, same thing. I don't know what's next. I focus straight on this fight, everything on this fight. I've put everything, anything that doesn't help with this fight the last four months or whatever it's been, I've cut it out. I've removed it. I've, <laughs> yeah, everything has been focused strictly on this fight. Uh, Israel right here. Um, on your vlog, you had said that um, you feel better, you felt like better than you normally do at certain parts of this week and you were ready to go like maybe Monday, Tuesday, whatever, when you still had all this media. So what did you attribute that to like you just felt better than you did normally so earlier in the week mm, preparation preparation my body's ready to go my body's already dropping weight my body's already uh, dropping weight like like an excited dog outside a dog park in the car so I have to kind of tell it to chill stay heal we'll release soon and soon I'll be unleashed in Perth when you were the guest fighter backstage I asked like because Every, every, your past few fight weeks, you had this theme that you said, like you were, obviously you, you had the Jigsaw theme, the Undertaker theme. Mm -hmm. You said you'll know closer to the fight what your theme of this week would be. Have you thought of anything like that? Theme. Uh, mm, my life's a movie. Like legit. Who is? Sorry, it's just distracting. Um... Theme. Uh, honestly, I'm the hunter now. I've just been hunting, like in every sense of the word. And I make, I'll make sure, like when it's time to fight, I'll hunt him down. Like I said, my target's straight on him. Nothing else. Anything else? Not even him after this. I don't care. I'm focused on right now. You also shared a video of that promo package of The Rock and Stone Cold on Twitter. Is are you viewing? It, you and Alex is like that type of rivalry? No, nah, not really. I just, um, me and my boys were just talking. We've been watching a lot of WWE stuff at the house, and I was like, oh, yeah, that was that um, My Way highlight, one of the greatest highlights ever. And then I saw that bit, and I remember, like, f what The Rock said, you know, the way he said to Stone Cold, everything I'm going to put. Every I felt that. 
So that's why I shared that. And also, it's fucking dope track, dope highlights. So, yeah, and it was WrestleMania weekend. So it was a nice little homage to the merger. Yeah. Well, I was, gonna ask, I was gonna ask about that. What do you think of Endeavor buying the majority stake in the WWE? And now that it's kind of a package with the UFC right now. I like it. <laughs> Easy. Going back to that Rock Stone Cold trailer, do you view yourself and Alex as that sort of rivalry? Is this that rivalry in your career that you've sort of been waiting for? Your nemesis, this guy that you can go back and forth with over and over? I've had a couple, but none like this. This is probably the greatest storyline in MMA history. And uh, it's coming. Coming. Um, yeah, um, it's probably one of, if not the greatest storyline in MMA history. And not many people get the opportunity to show how great they are, to rise to the occasion when all the odds are stacked against them, when people have counted them out. And for me, this fight, I feel like the underdog. I feel like everyone's counted me out. I feel like you know, because of the results of the last fight, people were just like, you know, goldfish memories. They forgot what I've done in this game. They forgot who I am. And it's time to remind people how great I am. Tell us, in your mind, why this is the greatest rivalry in MMA history. It's, it's, it's spanned across... A, <laughs> it's, um, it's spanned across years, across two different combat codes, spanned across different countries. Um, the history of matchups between me and Alex, um, even in the way that in his head, he's the protagonist, you know, in my view, my POV, I'm player one, I'm the protagonist, he's the antagonist, and I'm just doing so much better in life, and he kept on trying to chase what he already had, and then got to this point, I made it easy for him to get to the title. I didn't make it easy for him to get the title, but to get to the title, I made it easy for him because he already had that win over me in kickboxing. So he dodged all the, the gauntlet. Like, I, I didn't dodge the gauntlet. I went through every different style you could to get to this point. For sambo guys, jiu-jitsu guys, wrestlers, strikers, MMA guys. Um, so, yeah, it was an easy layup. But now this is the point where it's like I'm down, you know, two fights in kickboxing, one fight in MMA. Can you guys keep it quiet in the back, please? Whoever is there, opening the door. Sorry, I'm trying to think. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I'm down three. And then this is like in every movie that your one shot. This is my Eminem moment, my eight-mile moment, you know. You get one shot, do not miss your chance to blow. This opportunity comes once in a lifetime. And this is it. This is it for me. One, uh, this is like imagine what if I get it done? What if I get it done better than he's ever done it? What if I butcher him? and beat the fuck out of him. Because I always do, but I just ramp it up now. And I don't let him get any breath, and I take him out. I put him on his back, oh, you know, we'll find out. I do all this shit, and I, I beat his ass, do some, some damage to him, and it's just like, wow, amazing. Like I said, I don't keep score, I settle them. And he who laughs last, laughs best. Last one for me. I know you're a guy who likes to show appreciation and love to people that you think are talented. You're sharing a card with Adrian Yanez, a guy I know that you really uh, appreciate his skill. That's, my, that's the fight I'm looking forward to apart from mine the most. Adrian Yanez, I just saw him in the bathroom before. That guy, I got, I got so much love for his style, so much respect for him as a person, uh, for his, his coach, Doug Jitsu, you know, um, Eve Edwards. But he is, he's a force to be reckoned with. 135, he's the next champ. I mean, respect to everybody else in the game, but I feel like he's a, you know, shout out to Rob Font as well. Rob Font's a, you know, a veteran in this game, a hell of a fighter. It's a big test for him, but Adrian Giannis is that dude. His, I even know he's a black belt. I thought he was just a striker, but he's a black belt in jiu-jitsu. I'm like, fuck. And you haven't even seen much of that yet, but he's just butchering everyone on the feet with his hands and his kicks. And, yeah, I look forward to watching his fight and taking inspiration from that. Is he? Many long-standing champions like GSP and Anderson Silva have talked about how they felt better after losing the belt, like it took off a pressure off them. I'm wondering if you experienced anything similar, almost like a relief of, of uh, kind of losing that championship pressure? Nope. 
And you mentioned how obviously you're focused on, on Pereira here and you're out to beat him. Um, do you almost expect an immediate trilogy bout if you do beat him? Because, I mean, th as you mentioned, the storyline's there and it'd be 1-1 one, one in mixed martial arts. Nope. So you think you beat him and it's done? I don't know what's happening after this fight. I'm focused yes. fully on this fight. And you mentioned on your YouTube channel that this is your last shot. Um, I'm wondering what exactly did you mean by that? Did you mean like in the division, at Pereira, or in your career as a whole, what, what did you mean by the last shot? At Pereira, I'm going to get this done worse than he ever has. Yeah. And in that uh, fight, we saw that you had a lot of success in the wrestling in the first fight. Um, I'm wondering, how do you shape the game plan around? Because this is not kickboxing anymore, right? This is mixed martial arts. Uh, is the wrestling an area that you're thinking about exploiting on Saturday? Maybe. Thank you. Israel, Israel Thank you. Uh, to your left. To your left over here. Um, you're next, you're next. So, you know, in the, I, you mentioned earlier, you know, people forgetting things about the, you and Alex that you've been beating his ass, for lack of a better term, the majority of the fight. I think a lot of people forget. I mean, first round, you might have been 10 seconds away from winning the fight in the first Three round. Three seconds, one shot. Yeah, and so I'm just kind of curious, you know, you know, Obviously, progressively in that fight, you, you ended up losing. But I'm just kind of curious, like, what do you take from the fact that you were three seconds away from winning, and, and how can you capitalize that? Mm, that's in the past. That doesn't really come into my mind frame. I just know I've, I've hurt this guy. He knows. He might try and bullshit and or whatever. He's not. I don't have to try and intimidate him. He doesn't get intimidated. Neither do I. I fear no man that, works to, that walks this earth. But, um, yeah, that's in the past. This is now. And he knows how dangerous I am. He knows I'm not an easy fight. He knows he's going he's gonna to have to go through fire. He's going to have to go through fire. And I'm going to make him fight for his life in this fight. But, this, look, this is, I said say less, do more. But we're here. You put a mic in front of me. You expect me to talk. I really, I, I'm over all this shit. I really just want to fight. But you guys want some words? I'll give you words. I'm going to make him fight for his life. It's not no trash talk. It's not no bullshit. I'm here to fight. I'm ready to go. I can weigh in probably tomorrow. If you make me, I'll weigh in tomorrow, and we can fight. But right now, I'm just over the trash talk, all the speaking. I just want to fight. Perfect. And then, yeah, you made a mention earlier uh, that you feel like the underdog uh, in this fight. And I asked you uh, before the fight in Madison Square Garden your take on being a favorite. And you said that you should be the underdog. And I'm just curious, do you embrace it? I mean, you said earlier the, the Hunter thing. Do you embrace this? Do you like this uh, spot that you're in? Yes. Welcome to Miami. This Bless is a big you. fight. Thank First you. time in 20 years, UFC's in Miami. You're in the main event, big show. I'm just, what are your thoughts of being a part of this event and being here in South Florida and Miami? Last time I was here was 2015, and I had a really good time with um, the, the Black Zillion teams, Henry Hooft, shout out to Glenn, or that's his name, Glenn, RIP, because um, he looked after me when I was here, and I had a really good time. So. So far, I've, I've had a good time being in Miami, but make no mistake, I've had my eye on the target. And like I said, that's really, that's really all I'm focused about. But last night, we went to a comedy show. It was outside in South Beach, just taking the sights in. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm here for work. I'm here for war. And you mentioned WWE, and I'm curious because we talked a little bit about the merger with WWE UFC. Did you get to watch WrestleMania? Did you have a favorite moment? Would you like to be on a WrestleMania someday? Um, I did not watch WrestleMania, no, but I saw highlights. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd like to even just attend one. Um, that would be a family event with my, my family, take them out to WrestleMania one day. But if I happen to jump over the barrier, grab a steel chair and smack someone across, across the head, that would be fun too. All right, thank you. Hey, uh, Israel. Go ahead. Oh, no, you go. You're on. You're on. Yeah. So uh, we're, from, we're from Brazil. You have, you have a lot of fans in Brazil. People appreciate your style. They enjoy watching you fight. Right now, it just happens you're fighting your guy. But uh, how do you see Alex as, a, as an opponent and just send a message to your, to your fans in Brazil? I love my Brazilian fans. Even when I was out there, they love me. The favelas love me. They can relate to me. They understand what I've been through. But again, I'm fighting one of, one of your own. But um, yeah, he's a great opponent. Make no mistake. 
I know how great he is. This is what makes this fight great. And he knows how great I am, no matter how much they try to undersell it to you. They understand who they're fucking with. They understand who they're messing with. They know this is not going to be easy. And they can, try and, they can try and bullshit their way through it, but I know they're a smart, smart team. But, hey, if they want to underestimate me, I welcome it. But me and Engage will make a Brazilian shirt, a shirt dedicated to our Brazilian fans after this fight, just to show appreciation to Brazil. So, obrigado. Thank you. Mm. Easy. Uh, after all the studying of your last fight and the preparation for this fight, what would you say that's going to be uh, the most important adjustments that you got to do to take the win this time? Mm, the most important adjustment. Mm, don't give him a chance to breathe. I think that was imp very important in the last fight. Yeah. I mean, I let him breathe a little bit. But this time, suffocate him. Thank you. Izzy, just uh, one more here. Um, I know you're obviously a big fan of Anderson Silva, and you have a lot of respect for him. Mm -hmm. It was announced uh, recently that he's going to join the UFC Hall of Fame. Just curious to get your reaction, and I don't know if you have some words for, for his career and what he meant to you personally. I mean, about time. He's already been a legend, Hall of Fame, to a lot of people. So that goes without saying. Um, is it from here? Um, I'm from Brazil, like uh, as the last reporter. Um, your coach said recently that he didn't not agree with this not with this quick turnaround. What Who did? Who did? Sorry. Who said that? Um, your coach. My coach. Yeah said uh, he, di he did not agree with this turn quick around to face uh, Poatan. And what do you think about this statement? I don't know. Ask him. Okay. Thank you. That's it? Cool. Thank you.